911, what's your emergency? Back up is in route. 911, what's your emergency? Battlefields, homes, pubs, and restaurants. Almost anywhere you go in Gettysburg, you will come across a place that is supposedly haunted. And it's very easy to understand why. Because tens of thousands of men lost their lives here in this small Pennsylvania town in July of 1863. This building was here during the Battle of Gettysburg. It was used as a casual collection point, just like any other building in town would have been used for back then. It would make sense that the spirit who sets off ghost hunting gadgets in this Baltimore street home fought and died in the Civil War. But this resident spirit has no connection to the Battle of Gettysburg. The morning of August 31st, 1985, between the hours of 1 and 2 a.m., this young lady was murdered in this apartment. Her name, Deborah Harmon. This is the picture of her right off of her tombstone, which is at the Evergreen Cemetery, same cemetery Jenny Wade is buried in. Police say Debbie Harmon was shot and killed while trying to stop her live-in boyfriend, Donald Painter, from leaving their home with a shotgun to go and kill the man who hit on her at a local bar. Sadly, she was fatally shot twice while trying to grab the gun. Debbie dropped right here in the middle of the kitchen. She managed to drag herself in the middle of the kitchen into the doorway leading into the dining room. That is where her body was found when the police and EMTs arrived. Donald told the police it was an accident. He was later convicted and sent to prison for her death. If you can go elsewhere in the house, if you can go to other rooms, can you touch the green light? Okay. Now, Debbie's spirit is said to reach out from the dead every night to connect with people who visit her home during ghost tours. When we first got to this location, we talked to Deborah, we would call her Deborah. She corrected us numerous times on her name is not Deborah, it is Debbie. When we found her tombstone, we noticed at the bottom of the tombstone it says, Our Dear Beloved Debbie. So that's clearly the name she likes to go by. The Unexplained Cases team worked with paranormal investigator Robert Simmons from Gettysburg Paranormal Association, Gettysburg Ghost Tours, and a crew of amateur ghost hunters to investigate the Baltimore Street Murder House. They used cameras, digital audio recorders, spirit boxes, and meters that measure changes in the electromagnetic field. It didn't take that long before Debbie made her presence known. We've got a couple new people over here. Let's let's turn them in and do themselves. They said hello. Yeah. A quick hello on the spirit box, but a much longer conversation via our EMF meters. If you would move on, if you could, touch one of the green lights and let us know. If you didn't go to college in Pennsylvania, will you make one of those lights light up? So she just doesn't want to answer that question. Mm -hmm. She did go to college in PA just to do that real short time. There we go. Yeah. Like, okay. You knew the answer to that one. You ratted me in all that time. Do you think that what he did was intentional? Did he do it on purpose? If you think he, he shot you on purpose, light up one of the lights so we can see. Um, Debbie, Stevie Nicks is getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for the second time. It's a big honor. Not many people yeah. can say that. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was an intelligent haunting for sure. Questions were asked of Debbie, and she responded with her energy lighting up the meters. It seemed like Debbie's spirit got very comfortable with guest investigator Cindy Altman. Her house. When you were talking to Debbie, it seems like you were making a, a connection with her too. Did you kind of feel that also? Or? It's, it's, it's just almost like interviewing. It's just asking questions to try and find out about the person. The activity jumped to a fever pitch when the group was told that Debbie was a big Fleetwood Mac fan. Favorite song, 
it's a good one, Landslide. She showed her appreciation for playing the tune through these EMF meters. Everyone in the room was captivated by what we were witnessing. Apparently, Debbie was more engaged than usual with her house guests. I think, uh, as far as the murder house went, I think we had a lot longer of a communication in the dining room than we usually have. Usually, it lasts about 15, 20 minutes. Tonight, it felt like a good 40 to 40 minutes to an hour. So it was a more decent night. But did our group really talk to Debbie, or was it some other spirit? To find out, we asked our newest Unexplained Cases team member, Medium Miriam Farish. We only gave Miriam Debbie's name and a picture, nothing about the house or city she lived in. Yes, it was an accident. I didn't have a strong will to live. Um, I probably could have fought harder to escape, but I was in a very bad situation, a situation I didn't want to be in, and I was ready to check out. It was an accident, but at the same time, it was the level of anger in that relationship was going to escalate at some point. It was inevitable. So, what about all those EMF meters that apparently go off nightly during those ghost tours in the house? Is Debbie responsible for all that paranormal activity? People want to believe what they want to believe. I'm not at that house, but there are spirits haunting that house. There are spirits that have not passed over, that are messing with people, that are happy to do it. But I am not at that house. I have moved on. I am no longer um, a part of, of that experience. I am in a new body. I am not in that house. But yes, there are spirits there that are messing with people, but it's not me. So it appears Debbie has found peace. But for the ghosts to make a nightly appearance in her old home, oh, they certainly have not. For Unexplained Cases, I'm Darren Dito.